Well, hello, kindergarten. We're going to take a look at another spring-themed book today, and it's about April Fools, and it's called April Fool Phyllis. Or April Fool Phyllis, because, you know, there's a exclamation point right there. It's written by Susanna Leonard Hill, and it's illustrated by Jeffrey Ebler. Now, instead of actually starting at the beginning, we're going to look at the author's note in the back, which gives you some cool facts about the history of April Fool's Day. And I'm going to read this to you. No one knows exactly when April Fool's Day took place, but it seems to have grown out of celebrations for the, for the beginning of spring. Long ago, the vernal equinox, or the first day of spring, was thought to occur on March 25th instead of March 20th or 21st. Some European cultures celebrated the coming of spring for eight days, beginning on March 25th and ending on April 1st. This was New Year's Day, according to the old Julian calendar. In 1582, Pope Gregory XIII established the Gregorian calendar, which we still use today, and New Year's Day was moved to January 1st. Because news traveled slowly in those days, many people did not hear of the change immediately and continued to celebrate New Year's Day on April 1st. Others heard of the change but didn't like it and stubbornly continued to celebrate New Year's Day on April 1st. These people were thought of as fools. They were sent on fools' errands, and people played practical jokes on them. Over time, playing pranks on April 1st became a tradition. In Scotland, April 1st was celebrated by hunting the gawk. A gawk is a cuckoo or a fool. Scotland is the original of the kick me, is the origin of the kick me sign taped to people's backs. In France, a favorite trick was to place a dead fish on someone's back without being noticed. When the prank was discovered, the prankster would yell, Poison d'avril! Nowadays, French children substitute a paper cutout of a fish for the real thing person fooled is called a poisson de ville. Forgive my French, it might not be correct. Literally, that means April's fish. A fish may have been chosen for the joke because in April the sun leaves Pisces the sign of the fish, but it is more likely because an April fish is young and hence easily caught. The Jewish celebration of Purim is a similar spring pranking, prank playing day. In Iran, people play jokes on April 3rd because it's the 13th day of the Persian calendar's new year, and it is believed that by going out you escape the bad luck of number 13. In some countries, including Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom, it is said that the prank must be played before midday. So that's before noon. If it is played after midday, then the person pulling the prank is the fool. April Fool's Day is just for is a just for fun holiday. It is not religious. No one is expected to give candy or gifts, and no one is let off from work or school. It is simply a day for tricks and pranks. It is no wonder that such a day should occur when the promise of spring makes everyone lighthearted. But watch out, or you could be the April Fool. So here's our title page. April Fool, Phyllis by Susanna Leonard Hill, illustrated by Jeffrey Ebler, and it's published by Holiday House in New York. Now, I need to explain something. Punxsutawney Phyllis, um, Punxsutawney Phil is the name of the guy that, we, that pops out of the ground on Groundhog's Day. So Punxsutawney Phyllis is his cousin. And this is just a fun little page before the story starts and you'll see like a gallery of photographs of different hall of phils and phyllis and it's a dedication page so our author dedicates it with love for becca ethan and garrick sister and brothers extraordinaire and for penelope whose day this is and our illustrator has dedicated this book for jack and molly Phyllis knew everything about the weather. After all, she was Punxsutawney Phyllis, weather prophet extraordinaire. So when she woke up on April 1st, the day of the spring treasure hunt, it took only one whiff of the morning air to tell her something wasn't right. 
We have to cancel the treasure hunt, she announced at breakfast. There's a blizzard coming. Everyone was stunned. A blizzard? said Uncle Phil. In April? Then Phil Jr. started to laugh. You actually had me fooled for a second, he said. Yeah, Phyllis, snickered Pete. Not a bad joke. This isn't an April Fool's joke, insisted Phyllis. But no one paid any attention. Aunt Patsy fluttered her pancakes with homemade maple syrup and passed the jug to old Grandfather Groundhog. What a great year for syrup, he said. I can't remember a year when the sap has run this long. That's because winter isn't over, said Phyllis. I'm telling you, we're going to have a blizzard today. Give up, Phyllis, said Pete. If folks don't listen, Phyllis said, they'll be in danger when the blizzard comes. A bit later, Phil Jr. came in from outside. Phyllis is right, he said. It's freezing. He held out his paws to Aunt Patsy. They're like icicles, she exclaimed. We can't have the treasure hunted if it's this cold. I told you, began Phyllis. April Fool, shouted Phil Jr. I used a bag of ice to make my paws cold. Very funny, said Phyllis. But everyone else laughed. A few minutes later, Pete yelled down from the mouth of the burrow. Phyllis really was right. It's snowing! Everyone rushed up the tunnel. Sure enough, a curtain of fat white flakes drifted across the opening. Oh my! exclaimed Aunt Sa Sassy. April Fool! shouted Pete. It's only confetti! Make all the jokes you like, said Phyllis. Just cancel the treasure hunt so no one gets lost in the snow. But no one listened. The grown-ups sat in the sun outside the burrow to swap tall tales and sent the youngsters off on the treasure hunt. Hmm, said Phyllis, reading the first clue. What goes up in the morning and down at night? The sun, guessed Cousin Jill. We can't go on the sun for the next clue, said Phil Jr. Uncle Phil's trousers, suggested Pete. All the little groundhogs giggled. They raced over to Uncle Phil and felt his pockets. But there was nothing there. There must be something else, said Jill. How about the thermometer, suggested Phyllis. They hurried to the thermometer by the door of the sugar house. Inside, the big kettle still filled with, still filled the air with sweet maple steam, even though it was April. Ooh, it's nice and warm in here, said Cousin Willis. No one noticed that the thermometer had dropped below 30 degrees. All they saw was the second clue. What does this one say, demanded Phil Jr. Phyllis read, What runs but has no legs. A clock, said Pete, but the third clue was nowhere near the grandfather clock. An engine, said Phil Jr., but no one knew of any engines in Puxatawney Hollow. I know, shouted Willis, the stream. They all rushed down to the stream. There was clue number three. The young groundhogs followed the clue farther and farther to the treehouse, to the blackberry patch, and to the shore of Puxatawney Pond. This must be the last one, Phyllis said. She brushed snowflakes out of her eyes to read the clue. What's sticky and sweet and found in a tree? That's easy, said Jill. They all dashed for the honey tree. There it is, shouted Willis, jumping up and down. What do you think it'll be? Phil Jr. asked as he lifted the lid. It was another note. April Fool, you win but lose. Look again at all your clues. They can be all solved, you see, with one answer, and it's me. I don't get it, said Pete. Phyllis explained. It means that there's one thing that the answer 
that's the answer to all the clues. But right now, we have a bigger problem. Look at the snow. It was a problem indeed, falling thick and fast, making it impossible to see more than a few feet in any direction. How will we find our way home? worried Willis. Phyllis looked at the little groundhogs. They were depending on her to get them home safely. How was she going to do it? All Phyllis could see was swirling white and something flapping in the wind against a nearby sugar maple. The sap line! That's it, she cried. Everybody stay with me. And this is what she's talking about, the sap line. The groundhogs clung to the sap line. Phyllis led the way from maple tree to maple tree all the way back to the sugar house. Thank goodness they're back, cried Aunt Patsy. We should have known you were right about the blizzard, said Uncle Phil. Looks like we're the April Fools. All's well that ends well, said Aunt Sassy. But we never saw the treasure hunt, said Phil Jr. Yes, we did, Phyllis said triumphantly. What goes up in the morning and down at night? What runs but has no legs? What's sticky and sweet and found in a tree? Sap! The treasure is right here! Sure enough, in the back corner of the sugar house was another treasure chest. Phyllis lifted the lid eagerly. It's empty! she cried. What? All the groundhogs crowded in to look. April Fool! shouted Phyllis, and she tossed handfuls of maple candy in the air for everyone to share.